Executive pay very much in the spotlight. It always is, but particularly following the ShopRite shareholder revolt against Chief Executive White Bazon's 15 million rand in salary and benefits. Well, was it a revolt? 28% of shareholders voted against it. This is The Moneymakers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, via Skype, we'll speak to Mark Busson, who is executive ex-co member of the South African Reward Association, and Chris Gilmore from Barclays Africa Wealth and Investment Management. But what determines fair pay. Chris Devisa famously said that if he could find more executives like Whitey Bazan, he'd pay them all an absolute fortune. Yeah, and therein lies the, the nub of this whole argument, I think, Bruce. Unfortunately, there just aren't that many Whitey Bassons. They broke the mould with Whitey. And, uh, you know, when I was asked to come on this programme, uh, I thought if you asked me for 50 million rands to go and do Whitey's job, I would say no. For no money would I do it. I've seen what I'd do it for a year, really <laughs> destroy it, <laughs> take the money and, and run. run yeah. yes. Wait, do you think they'd let you away? I, I don't think so. The, I, the, I'd be out of there within a month. We'd have to do severance. I'd, I'd make yeah. a killing out of it. But uh, the I'd, point is made. I've seen Whitey in action. I mean, he's a very, very special individual. He takes no prisoners. He, he calls a spade a shovel. I mean, you could put something else in there if you wanted. You but, um, you know, it's, it, it's quite amazing that, um, you know, he, he's, he's, he's tough. He's, he just grinds away, and that is why it's reflected in the incredible movement in the share price of the past few years. past two or three years hasn't been so wonderful. But now that's perhaps the problem where, Mark Busson, shareholders are finally beginning to take notice of the pay because when the share price was going up in quantums of 30 and 40 percent a year, nobody was going to question the pay of the chief executive. The share price around 150 bucks, allegations that they've been involved in Lewis-style mis-selling of insurance policies, that's scratching the surface of, of, of the problem now at ShopRite as well. Suddenly, Whitey doesn't look so squeaky and brilliant anymore, or does he? So therein lies the rub. We need to determine and uh, get a definition of what does fair pay mean? Because fair pay means different things to different people. There was a commission set up in the UK in 2011 where a few judges got around the table to try and determine what fair pay meant. And they looked at it through several lenses. So right now, if we're looking at it through the shareholders lens, the answer is probably no. But if you look at it through employees' lenses and all those that have been recently employed, he created so many more new jobs, they're probably saying yes. So which lens are you looking through? I don't know. Do you think there's a shelf stacker at uh, ShopRite who earns, I don't know, two and a half thousand rand a month, thinks that 50 million rand a year is a reasonable salary? It does come down to reason. But what it does, Mark, is it provides people who have a lot less with a big stick with which to beat the entire corporate sector. The entire corporate sector is painted with a 50 million rand brush because suddenly trade unionists are able to say, look at these executives, they all get paid a fortune, just like Whitey Basson, 50 million rand. I mean, look, the, the number is big, but we're not just looking at a local market. So if um, you benchmark it just against South African executives, which is in that pool already, uh, then yes, but um, he, he's an international player and we benchmark that sort of role against international salaries too. And there he's, he's, he's on the money, he's bang on. So um, internationally he's very mobile, people want him all over and uh, one has to attract and retain with that sort of money. If one just takes the stance of a South African point of view and one looks at the 2,000 rand that a pick or packer earns, uh, yes, then one's saying it's a lot. So an improvement structurally that one could make is uh, time over to performance, and that's what the shareholders are saying. Uh, but when he does get those huge payouts in terms of shares, everyone complains again. So um, I think the trick here is to say what did he do to earn the money. And when one says how many jobs are created and how many stores are open and uh, how over a 10 year period, not a two or three year period, the shareholders have gained, then I think one's uh, a little more relaxed. Okay, but it's, um, um, it's, it comes down to at 50 million rand a year, call it a million rand a week, call it 200,000 rand a day, call it driving to work. You, you're, you've earned 15,000 rand if you're stuck in a traffic jam. The, is there an elegant solution to this, Chris Gilmore, especially in uh, the world talks about the 1% and, and Whitey Basson certainly in that 1%. In South Africa, we have a very different dynamic, w regardless of where you can benchmark a South African CEO's pay globally and what they could get elsewhere. They choose to operate here. Yeah. Should we not be tailoring that accordingly? 
Bruce, I think that, that's fair comment. And uh, I, I do take the, I mean, I, I hear what Mark says and I agree with him, and you do have to bar, uh, benchmark against global best practice. However, you know, you could argue that, well, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly mobile sort of world. If you don't like it here and, and uh, you have to be an optimist to live in South Africa these days, you can get on a plane and if you're really that good, you can command that kind. You can command an awful lot more money. Take Alan Clark, for example, at SAB Miller. He gets an awful lot more than the kind of 50 million we're talking about. Um, but, but he is London-based. But he's London-based, yes, and, and where the cost of living is substantially higher. Fair enough. But if we look at um, what Ketso Gordon, the former PPC CEO, tried to do a, a couple of years ago, where he said, I'm going to compress that gap between what is paid to the, the average floor worker and what I'm paid. He was actually very successful. And what did he get for his trouble? He was ousted by the board. In the, but not for doing that. Not for doing yeah. that necessarily. He, he, was I he was difficult in other parts of the business. No, he was. You're quite yeah. right. But I think what he did, and I, I really yeah. thought uh, he did a fantastic job, but I think um, he, he gained a lot of resentment from certain members of the board for, for doing exactly what he did. The EFF recently uh, marching all the way from town and into Santon. Suddenly the EFF had 40 or 50,000 people on a march where as well as Zima Vavi and 200 churches and civil organizations couldn't get 5,000 to go to the union buildings. We can talk about the reasonableness and the logic of chief executive pay and we can take out spreadsheets and we can show performance. It doesn't matter a jot yes. to 25.7% of the population who don't have jobs. Another 15% have given up trying to find a job um, in a place where our youth unemployment is sitting north of 60%. Yes. No, you're quite right. It's very cold comfort indeed. Um, it, uh, under those circumstances, when, and when you have one of the highest Gini coefficients of any country in the world, and when the gap between the, the highest and the lowest paid workers is so high, it's, it, it, it isn't good. And in, in this country particularly, where growth is so pathetic, and is likely to remain pathetic for the, for the foreseeable future, it's little surprise that uh, Julius Malema and his followers are doing so well. If we had a, a more buoyant economy, I think a lot of this would be swept under the carpet. It wouldn't be such high profile. But because of the fact that um, so, so, so many people are earning so little, I mean, for example, a security guard or a cleaner is probably taking home 2,000 rands a month. I, I have no idea how you, you live on that kind of ridiculously low salary. So yes, I think moves have to be made to kind of adjust them. And it is a difficult one, because how on earth do you keep incentivizing the very best, the, the likes of a Whitey Basson, who really is outstandingly good, and at the same time, increase the huge number of people who are at the bottom of the, the barrel. How do you encourage the likes of David Neal to come and run clicks from the United Kingdom? How do you encourage Richard Brasher to leave Tesco? Exactly. He's been lucky he did. To leave Tesco uh, and come and run pick and pay. Mark Basson, do we need to see a little bit more elegance in boardrooms when it comes to the way in which pay packets are structured, perhaps? A little bit more EQ rather than IQ applied to this problem? Yes, definitely. And and the word I would use is the optics. We need to consider the optics of what we're doing, not just the absolute clinical uh, definition and the technical side of why why we're so correct and why we're so right, but, but consider the optics and consider how others are seeing it. So that person that you've just spoken about earning 2,000, it doesn't feel so aggrieved and it doesn't create a political vacuum for uh, the disenfranchised. But would, would the world be that much less offended if Whitey Basson, rather than being paid 50 million, was being paid 40 or 30 or 20? I don't know if we could go as low as 10, but let's say he was being paid 20. There's still a substantial divide between the 20 and the, the two or 3,000 rand that his lowest paid worker might get. There is. And how much is enough? Uh, uh, is 30 million enough? And the answer could be yes. So one, one shouldn't just look at the fixed pay portion, but also the short-term incentive and long-term incentive. And uh, the right thing to do is to structure it more according to um, the full package. In other words, the, 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 the short-term and long-term included. But do we need to see more boardrooms doing what Ketso Gordon did in terms of pay? Yes, and it is happening. And shareholder activism is increasing more and more. It, we need to get better at reflecting how executives earn their money, what they did to earn it, and get better at showing it in the annual financial statements. Some of those annual financial statements are fairly complex and not everyone can understand what the person did. They just see massive numbers and, and get really upset. Uh, is Mark Basson being a little bit... I'll, I'll let you go, Mark. We've got problems with your line this evening. I'll thank you very much for joining us. Mark Basson, he's ex-co member of the South African Reward Association. Chris Gilmore, does it really matter how you explain it? 
it's the number that sticks, it's the headline. You were in journalism long enough to know yes. Yes. the headline sticks. And I can remember almost a decade ago, we had, we had a similar front page uh, thing on, on Whitey. I can't remember how much you went in those days. It was a bit, maybe half of that. But, but you're quite right. It's, it's, the, it's the sheer quantum. And at the other end of the scale, it's the sheer volume of numbers of people who are very, earning very, very little. I think what that talks to in the longer term, Bruce, you also asked about an elegant solution. I think the elegant solution in the long run is to get more educated people, more skilled people to come in and to apply what you refer to as an EQ base rather than IQ base. There's a company in the UK, in the US as well, called WL Gore and Associates, mm -hmm. Gore-Tex. And it's an EQ company. It's an incredibly flat structure. I don't know how much the CEO gets paid. But you know what? People don't have meetings. They get on with the job. They all push the, with a shoulder at the wheel. It's quite incredible. The productivity of, of an EQ-based company like that is wonderful. But you've got a, an incredibly highly skilled workforce. And I think therein lies the, the solution to this. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a challenging one in a country like South Africa where skills are very hard to come by. I thank Mark Kabassin, the ex-co member of the South African Reward Association, and Chris Gilmore from Barclays Africa Wealth and Investment Management on the thorny subject of pay. More pay issues, the lack of pay, and what we're going to do about it next time. For now, though, bye-bye.